Welcome to St Andrew's House, the home of Scottish civil servants, which sits on the site of the demolished Colton Jail. Its unique design is testament to the vision of the architect Thomas S. Tate, who was appointed in January 1934, and through royal intervention, his plans were approved that October. On 28th April 1937, no fewer than a thousand people gathered on Regent Road to witness the laying of the foundation stone by the Duke of Gloucester. With the steel skeleton already in place, St Andrew's House had the distinction of being the largest building with a metal frame in Europe. Building work continued for another two years. Ending in August 1939. However, before the building could be officially opened by King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, fate intervened. War was declared on the 3rd of September 1939. The following day, Monday, the 4th of September, Scottish civil servants moved into St Andrew's House for the first time. To this day, St Andrew's House has never been officially opened, and the golden key with the King and Queen's initials, created specially for the opening, was never used. At the front of the building, above the doorway, is the Royal Coat of Arms, designed and carved by Alexander Carrick, and below the crest, the Medallion of St Andrew. The columns on each side of the door display the shamrock, the thistle and the rose, symbolic of the United Kingdom. There are two heraldic panel shields on the first floor, showing St Andrew's cross, flanked by a unicorn, and St George's cross, with the lion rampant. As with the golden key, the decorative work on the windows as the King and Queen's initials. There are six 12 foot high statues which symbolise the four original departments health, agriculture, fisheries, and education, as well as statecraft representing home affairs and the architecture of the building itself. Hello, I'm Morris Wilson, and if you come away in, I'll take you around some of the interesting features in the building. This is the Permanent Secretary's Office, who is the top civil servant in the Scottish Government. Originally, this room was used by the Secretary of State, then the First Minister, now it is used by the Permanent Secretary. In this room, there are many Art Deco features. The wood panelling around the room is made from a walnut tree planted by Mary Queen of Scots in 1565 at Balmero Abbey near Dundee. This panelling added an extra cost to the building of £50. When they cut the tree, they cut it. So each panel has on it two eyes, a nose and a mouth and this is replicated throughout the room. There is also many Art Deco features like the ceiling and the light fittings and the umbrella stand and coat hooks. And it's in this room where you can find the golden key still in its original cabinet. And finally our fireplace which is made from Hopton wood stone and is similar to other fireplaces in our conference rooms. This is one of our conference rooms, which is part of a suite, which again has Art Deco features. We have the fireplace, similar to the one in the Permanent Secretary's office. 
the umbrella stand, the coat hooks. And the walls are panelled by Indian silver greywood with Indian laurel bands. Round the doors, you can see the Art Deco scrolls and columns. One of the interesting features of this room is our dividing wall, which was installed in 1939. And for 40 years, it was never serviced and never broke down. It enables us to turn two separate rooms into one large room. And further up in the, in the suite of rooms, we have three rooms, which has two dividing walls and becomes one larger room. You'll have heard the noise as the wall was going up and down. And this is the chain that drives it up and down. And outside in the corridor is the motor which drives the machinery. The building has Art Deco staircases. You'll notice the staircases have original colours. Historic Scotland insists the colours are kept the same. The staircases are all about not being symmetrical. And if you look at the terrazzo, you will see there's a border down the outside, but not on the inside. And again, if you look at the banisters, they change in shape as they go down the staircases. Some are longer than others. And if you look carefully at the smaller landings, you'll see that the number of steps vary from five to six to seven and to eight. Here we have another Art Deco staircase, although not as elaborate as the main staircases. The windows were replaced in the year 2000 when we did the refurbishment. Originally, they were to be double glazed, but they had to be exact replicas and bomb proof, so it couldn't be done. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed your visit. Before you go, be sure to look at our doors, which have the four saints, and when the doors are closed, form the cross of St. Andrew with the words, I will make you fishers of men. <laughs>